Hi, I'm Rai Russell and welcome to the Ganja show. <laughs> welcome, welcome so much Rai. Uh, thank you so much for coming. I I don't think I've ever done a podcast with a podcaster. <laughs> so it's kind of the meta and with the cannabis podcaster. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh like we were discussing before, uh you were talking about the gaps in the cannabis industry that you got to know because of the podcast. Uh, what do you think the gaps are in the uh, is it the us cannabis industry canada or only the us i mean there's gaps in the industry no matter where you look and what i'm finding so i reside in maine which is the the northeastern part of the united states and one thing that i've noticed is state to state country to country every demographic is going to have unique challenges because there are for example when i think of of where you're located in india i think of a science and engineering and a whole level of hemp research canada's doing it us is trying but i believe that the skill sets and the knowledge sets that you have in india makes you better prepared for the extraction for cannabis testing for manufacturing of finished goods and what's interesting is you then look at at Canada and they are they've established their THC guidelines and parameters and now i'm seeing a lot of industrial hemp applications and then when i look at the united states every state is like a different market the laws are completely different your cultivation your licensing your retail everything is very different so in maine i think one of the biggest challenges that i'm seeing here is there's one adult use testing facility so when you have adult use market come online and you only have one facility that has yeah. to test all of the products for i think right now there's seven or eight maybe nine licenses granted and there's like three or four more being added every day well what happens when we have all these retailers but there's not enough product on shelves and so testing is a concern here in Maine where i look at california which is a much more established cannabis market they yeah. have their own challenges they're dealing and battling with inadequate social equity programs right now when getting a retail license is $100,000 and you have to tie up millions of dollars in real estate in licensing in municipality in waiting for approvals and all this stuff there's no social equity there there's no acknowledgement of what you know the criminal justice system has done to marginalized members of our community and so out out west you're really seeing that struggle for community you're seeing that struggle for people to play in this industry and so i think the challenges are going to be very unique to the different markets as we see them come online yeah i uh you said a lot of important points and let's look at them one by one uh first you talked about india being possibly the hub of extraction manufacturing <laughs> uh something i would like to add in that is uh i think that would be the case but all the technology and money is going to be coming from canada and us uh i don't see a lot of companies in india currently researching in hemp or uh, there are a few but i don't think there is enough money uh or i think i don't think they are able to attract enough money let's let's give them a chance also <laughs> they they might be trying to Definitely. but they just can't attract enough money from the investors suppose so and uh, one of the companies from canada has already started uh, to approach indian government and this they might be doing something soon so i i think it'll be the western influence and i i find it a little bit sad i know uh, obviously you need money coming in to be able to do all of these things and especially but but especially considering india i mean india is a land to diverse form of cannabis uh thanks to this podcast and talking to so many people uh you find cannabis which is around 30000 years old in the himalayas and uh, i mean there there are tourist places in india where uh, people from different countries come just to smoke the hash imagine i mean <laughs> yeah so uh, i i don't know how first of all yeah please please yeah yeah i was just going to say i've heard a lot 
I would love, you know, personally, I'd love to visit India for a multitude of reasons. I have some amazing friends there. I have some amazing partners here in the U.S. that are from India. Mm -hmm. And I keep hearing from individuals like yourself. And I mean, obviously, India has a large legacy with cannabis and hash. And so I, you know, I think I cannot wait for a world where we have tourism around cannabis because yeah. we have booze tours you know people can go get drunk and do all kinds of stupid things i mean you look at, at vegas right you can go what happens in vegas stays in vegas you can get <laughs> you know get intoxicated jump into the you know man-made lake and and call it a day and then you know most of us cannabis enthusiasts are a little bit more laid back we're a little bit more tame we're not you know we're not trying to go make a big show out of things and so i'm really excited for cannabis cannabis tourism. And so hopefully someday in the next couple of years, you and I will be able to go on a tour together. Yeah, definitely. Uh, one thing you missed about Vegas was uh, <laughs> they give so much alcohol so that they can spend a lot of money in casinos. Uh, that won't be the case with cannabis. I mean, people would just be fascinated with the machines in the casino. <laughs> yeah, different case exactly. altogether. Um, another interesting point you mentioned was the social inequity in California. Um, I was reading on somebody else's post on LinkedIn as well, 100k just to apply, uh, just to get the license and so many other expenses happening. Uh, even even though I, I want to understand from the point of view, uh, when India legalizes, I think a lot of things they should consider while legalizing, right? Uh, one thing Canada, Canada did wrong was didn't give enough time uh, to the retailers to, uh, you know, grow enough produce before legalizing so that they, and there was a lot of... Uh, demand and supply issues now there is a lot of demand of uh, so a lot of supply but no uh, less demand in canada that's what i've been hearing uh, so what would be the what would be the lesson for other states in the us for recreational uh, legalization and what could be uh, something like that for india as well great question i think that some of the bear well first of all i want to say that canada struggled primarily in my opinion Mm -hmm. Just my silly opinion. They struggled because they were kind of left to figure this out on their own. You know, the U.S. Yeah. kind of, you know, put their hands up, said we had California. You know, Australia was, you know, they're kind of leading and, and doing their own thing in, in New Zealand. And Canada really was and it's hard to say that they were on their own because you and I both know like you had mentioned there was a lot of there was a lot of influence from investors you know from the United mm. States and abroad uh, but Canada as regulators were more or less left to handle this on their own and regulators are they're entrepreneurs in a sense because they're trailblazing policy that's never been written yeah however they're also regulators that are trailblazing an industry that's never been written. So I try to give our regulators a little bit of a pass because this isn't easy. You and I don't have to write the laws. So it's very yeah. easy to critique. And what we call, you know, those that like, you know, American football, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking, yeah. which is everything that happened over the weekend, we get to say how stupid everybody was and how they should have done it. But we're not there in the moment and we're not there in live time. And so I think it's easy to look at Canada and say, whoa, you guys licensed quick. You had no product. Your consumers had no knowledge or education of what was going on. However, there's no difference that's happening here in the United States. There's a lack of education. There's a lack of awareness. This is a new industry and we're writing it now. And so 20 years from now, we're going to look back at these conversations and be like, man, that was a long time ago. Thank God the market is what it is today. Yeah. However, you know, it's, it's like technology, right? You've got this curve. And it starts to go exponential in the last couple of years. And we know that that's just going to become vertical. Yeah. Well, cannabis is going to be the same type of thing, is that we're going to have this tail and innovation is going to start slow until all of a sudden it starts fast. And that trend, I think, is going to reflect very similarly for regulators. You know, I, Cat Packers, you know, just a phenomenal leader of regulation in the U.S., and she's based in the city of Los Angeles. Well, she fits 
as a individual, right? She fits the characteristics of what we as a community are fighting for, for social justice. So those are important to her too. Yeah. Now the program's not perfect. I don't blame her. I don't attack her, you know? And I think that there are some entrepreneurs out there that says, you know, this is her seat. She should have it figured out by now. Well, she's one individual with a team trying to write laws and moderate an industry for hundreds and thousands of players. So for me, I try to have a little bit more patience with regulators than I think a lot of entrepreneurs, but every, every state, every market, every new program is going to take years to iron out some of their kinks. Got it. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, something like this happens with me as well. A lot of times, since I'm podcasting, a lot of people come and ask me, when do you think uh, India would legalize? And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just 22 years old right now. Uh, we don't have the concept, especially our generation, we don't have the concept of time yet. When alcohol was banned and then legalized again, and so many things happened, we don't know what happened then. We just know the current processes that happen. So, I mean, I definitely get it. When I tell somebody that it's going to be at least five years, uh, till we have legalization in India, some sort of legalization, they think it's a long time, <laughs> but mm -hmm. it actually isn't. I mean, I was talking to somebody from Mexico yesterday. They're living in Canada uh, since last three years and trying to understand the cannabis market so that they can sort of advise companies in Mexico. So Mexico uh, passed a law in 2017 to legalize medical marijuana and nothing has happened yet. Yeah. It's been legalized, but nothing has happened. So people miss out that particular point of, uh, you know, execution. It's just mm -hmm. not, you have to fight something in court. It's more about, you know, executing so many other things as well. Uh, uh, I, I forgot to ask you initially, uh, how did you get into this industry? Why did you start the podcast? Might be a different thing, but how did you get into cannabis? Why did you want to get into cannabis? Thank you for asking. Yes, I, I was first exposed to cannabis, I think like many in, in college. I had friends that used cannabis in high school. I never did. Yeah. And then when I went to university, I want to say it was my second year maybe. And, you know, your friends, you're out and you're having a good time. And, you know, someone asked me if I wanted to try it. And <laughs> I had, uh, I probably had, you know, one too many beverages at the time. And so I said, sure, why not? Well, I tried it and it was an interesting experience. I wouldn't say it was a bad one. I wouldn't say it was a good one. I just, it quickly identified that the product wasn't for me as an individual. Cannabis was, was not something that I was going to use at that point in my life. And I had no problem with any, I have no problem for the most part, as long as whatever anybody's doing impacts them and doesn't impact anybody else. Like, I think everybody should just have a good time and enjoy themselves responsibly. So I don't care. However, it wasn't for me. Fast forward about five years, I had a couple of successful businesses. I had uh, started to develop some just health issues overall, mental, physical, emotional. And then as you know, you know, one, one ailment will impact another part of, of who you are. And it eventually got to the point where my my doctor was was an amazing partner for me however we were always we were only able to fix one or two things and then it would have a consequence somewhere else and we had to address that and i would say after about seven or eight months i just it wasn't it wasn't dark it wasn't it's not as sad as it might seem. I just was very clear with my doctor that this is not a life that I want to live. I was vomiting every morning, uh, was sick all day. I couldn't sleep and everything was just a band-aid, but caused something else to be worse. And so I finally just, I had enough. And I said, there has to be a better way. There has to be something else. Cause I just, I don't want to do this. This is not an enjoyable existence. Yeah. And he had said to me that there was another option 
entirely. It was going to be a little bit more holistic and it would be something that I would have to do entirely on my own because he had no experience or knowledge. And so I was nervous and we talked about some of the options regarding cannabis, some of the products that were out there, but again, he had very little knowledge. And so made a couple of recommendations. We just, you know, we did a, you know, some searching online and, and found a couple of places that might be able to assist me. But I was so scared. I was so nervous because both of my dad's parents are ministers. My mom's parents are a little bit more old school. You know, they were there. My grandfather was from Belarus. My grandmother is, you know, grew up on a farm in, in Canada. And, you know, values were very, very traditional. And so I was never really never really talked about it. it I don't want to say like it was a, de a devil's lettuce you know in our family we just never really talked about yeah. it you know like drugs scared us and so I created a podcast because I had a background in media and what I decided was if I have to go on this journey alone there's a couple of things that were important to me one I want to hold everybody accountable if you were going, if you were creating the product that I was going to ingest and I died, I wanted you to know <laughs> I was going to tell people. Yes. So, you know, as you know, when I first started, I was a medical patient in Ohio. And so I called a grower and I told him, Hey, I have this podcast. I'm getting my medical card. I'm going to explore the cannabis industry. And people just in the industry started welcoming me and not pushing anything. You know, the retailer invited me to the store. Yeah, right. Come on down. You know, let's talk about this. Right. And I got to sit down with a pharmacist and have a conversation where they didn't sell me anything. They were like, totally understand why you're here. This is great. And we love the idea that you are recording this and you're going to distribute this because we need people to understand we're here to help. Cannabis is not for everyone. And this is how we apply it and how we use it. So that's how I started the podcast. And then it quickly started to grow. You know, the, uh, the audience grew. People were interested in understanding how to get a medical card. Going to the dispensary the first time is scary and overwhelming, you know, to some individuals. It was to me. And Honestly, if I wasn't documenting this journey for the media side, I don't know that I would have gone through the process because in Ohio, getting a medical card, you have to see specialists and you have to like, it's just a very challenging process. And so for actually kept pushing me to just get through it and just get it done. And then quickly, you know, I love entrepreneurship. I think that it's always special when, you know, people just kind of put bet it all and bet it all on themselves. And that excites me. And so my podcast, Weed Buds Radio, started to really turn into kind of like what, what you're doing is showcasing the minds that are making the industry move. And you know. through that, consumers are like, oh, I know that gentleman. He won't hurt me. You know, I know he cares about the product because he puts it in himself. And similar type of thing. I feel like, you know, if we can make cannabis and we can bring it to light in the media, then maybe people will, will not be so scared of it. Because I think that any fear of the product, there's natural fear. I mean, anything can be abused. But I think the exposure, the education, and just the visual of that's a person making a decision for a product that I might buy one day. And I think that that's the special place for media in cannabis. I mean, that's, first of all, uh, thank you for sharing your story. I mean, not everybody is comfortable talking about the bad things in their lives. Secondly, yeah. I mean, uh, it's so I'm so happy to listen from you your experiences saying that first of all cannabis is not good for everyone that statement some coming from somebody who's in the industry first of all it's just you know sort of a relief because when I talk to people they're so uh, you know there's actually one versus one 
basically not legal and legalization there are just two sides there's nothing in between and that's just sort of frustrating for someone who wants to listen to other people's point of view tomorrow i might even so earlier when i started my podcast i i was just talking about mental health and i met this doctor he's a psychologist sorry psychiatrist because he's a doctor he can prescribe you medicines he told me uh do you smoke cannabis and i just had no answer i just sort of just nodded because i actually can't say anything uh, right he just told me i have been doing these studies and i have had so many cannabis users as patients and is just not good for you if uh, and if i say the same thing to somebody who's a cannabis user they would probably just try and deny and they would say that it's good for your mental health just a blanket statement right uh, which i don't think uh, matters a lot and coming from somebody like you i think it just validates so many things and